This guide covers all the actions Archer and Bard learns from level 1 to 50, in order. We go over how each action is meant to be used, and recommend ways to use it when relevant. In the summary, we will cover a detailed attack rotation for use at level 50 that encompasses all of the things you learn throughout this guide. Now then, Heavy Shot is your starting action. It functions as your filler weapon skill, so you simply use this when you have nothing more important to do. At level 2, you learn the weapon skill Straight Shot. This can only be used when you have a so-called proc, which you get with a 20% chance whenever you use Heavy Shot. When this is available, you should always use it over Heavy Shot. At level 4, you learn the ability Raging Strikes, which boosts all the damage you do for a while. This action should be used as often as possible, but preferably, you want to late weave it to make the most of the duration. A crucial distinction between weapon skills and abilities is that while weapon skills are beholden to their 2.5 second shared recast timer, abilities are only limited by the fact that most actions incur a half second animation lock. For this reason, abilities should be weaved between weapon skills. You can typically fit two abilities between two weapon skills. Late weaving is the specific concept of delaying the use of an ability as late as possible without delaying your next weapon skill, to make the most of the buff the ability may give during your weapon skills. If you want to learn more about these concepts, I have a short about global cooldowns, relating to weapon skills, and a short about weaving in general. You will need a modest amount of skill speed to be able to fit an extra weapon skill by late weaving raging strikes. But even without the skill speed, it is still recommended as it gives you the largest possible window to fit extra ability attacks in the window as you unlock them. At level 6, you learn the weapon skill Venomous Bite, which does some damage up front and much more damage as a damage over time effect, or DOT for short. The DOT lasts 45 seconds and makes Venomous Bite stronger than Heavy Shot if the enemy survives at least 12 seconds with the DOT on them. Additionally, if you use dots like Venomous Bite while affected by temporary damage buffs, like Raging Strikes, then the damage bonus from that buff will apply for the full duration of the dot. This is the concept known as dot snapshotting. Also at level 6, you learn the role action and ability Leg Graze. This slows your target for a bit, but is generally only helpful in solo play and emergency situations. At level 8, you learn the role action and ability Second Wind, which heals you for a significant amount. When in a group, it is recommended to only use Second Wind if you are the only one that needs significant healing, as otherwise, the healer will probably cast a party-wide heal anyway. At level 10, you learn the role action and ability Foot Graze. This binds your target for a bit, but is broken free by attacks. Take note that damage over time will not break this bind. Although this is very neat, this is not helpful outside of solo content or emergency situations. At level 12, you learn the ability Bloodletter, which is an attack that holds two charges with one charging every 15 seconds. You should weave this ability between your weapon skills whenever you have a charge. You can gain a little bit of extra damage by saving a charge when Raging Strikes is about to be ready. You should, however, always make sure to have the cooldown ticking by not sitting on both charges. At level 15, you learn the ability Repelling Shot, which pushes you back 10 yards in about half a second. This can be useful for positioning, but in most cases, this action is not particularly important. For reference, players run at about 6 yards per second by default. As dungeons become available at level 15, it is worth mentioning that while ranged physical damage dealer jobs like Archer and Bard have great range, their ability to move at all times means that you should try to stick by your group. In essence, if you have no good reason to stand far away from your target, it is better to get closer to your group to make it easier for your healer to heal you, for instance. At level 18, you learn the weapon skill Quick Knock, an area of effect attack, or AOE for short, which beats both Heavy Shot and Straight Shot on two or more targets. On two targets, Venomous Bite has to last at least 24 seconds to break even with Quick Knock, and Quick Knock is always better than Venomous Bite if it can hit at least three targets. At level 20, you learn the role action and ability Peloton, which can be used freely to make you and your party run 20% faster while not in combat. Note that Sprint makes you run 30% faster, and that using two speed-increasing effects together will result in just the strongest effect, meaning that Sprint will take priority. I recommend using Peloton quite aggressively whenever you are not in combat, to make sure everyone in range benefits. You can even run back to help party members that fall behind catch up. 
At level 24, you learn the role action and ability Head Grace, which can be used to stop interruptible actions. If an enemy is using an interruptible action, the cast bar will be red and pulsing and blinking. Try to time your head raise as late as possible in the cast without missing the opportunity, such that the enemy wastes as much time as possible casting for nothing. At level 30, you learn the weapon skill Wind Bite, which does slightly less upfront damage than Venomous Bite, but significantly more damage over the duration. For this reason, you should always apply Wind Bite first. On two targets, Wind Bite has to last at least 24 seconds to beat Quick Knock, and on three targets it needs to last 42 seconds. For that reason, on AoE, I recommend spreading Wind Bite and Venomous Bite while the enemies are spread out enough that you cannot hit three enemies with Quick Knock, and then resort to just Quick Knock when you can. Also at level 30, doing your class quest line will eventually lead you to the Bard quest, which is available once you complete the main scenario quest, Self Management. Once you unlock the Bard, remember to equip your Soul Crystal to change into the Bard job. As an extra optional bonus, unlocking the Bard gives you access to the quest Plucking the Heartstrings at Miketos Amphitheater in Old Gridania, which gives you access to the performance menu to play music. The starting action of the Bard is the ability Mage's Ballad, which does some damage up front and boosts everyone in your party's damage output by 1% as a small bonus for its duration. Additionally, for the next 45 seconds, every 3 seconds that passes, there is an 80% chance that Repertoire activates, a mechanic shared amongst the Bard songs. Mage's Ballad's Repertoire effect is to reduce the cooldown of Bloodletter by 7.5 seconds on each proc. This of course means that during Mage's Ballad, you should be extra sure to use Bloodletter as quickly as you can weave it when it is available. Try to use Mage's Ballad alongside Raging Strikes, as they have the same cooldown. At level 32, you learn the role action and ability Arm's Length, which makes you immune to most knockbacks and also has the additional effect that if an enemy swings at you, it reduces their attack speed for a while. This is a very strong defensive tool if you need it, so consider using this ability when you are targeted by enemies, especially if the tank dies, for instance. At level 35, you learn the ability The Warden's Peon, which can remove a removable debuff from yourself or another party member. If you use it with no removable debuffs available on your target, it instead applies a buff that removes the first debuff that can be removed that appears on the target. You can identify removable debuffs by the bluish white line above the debuff icon. Remember to make use of this ability, as it has incredible power as the only ability-based debuff removal in the game. At level 38, you learn the ability Barrage, which makes your next single target weapon skill hit three times. It also immediately enables Straight Shot, which is the best option to spend this on anyway. Due to the ability having the same cooldown as Raging Strikes, it should generally be weaved around the same time. Only use Barrage if you don't already have a Straight Shot proc. On 6 or more targets, Barrage Straight Shot does less damage than Quick Knock, and so at that point you should skip this ability entirely. At level 40, you learn the ability Army's Payon. Similar to Mage's Ballad, it does some damage immediately and then boosts everyone in your party's direct hit rate by 3% as a small bonus. Additionally, Army's Payon's repertoire effect, which works the same as Mage's Ballad, is to reduce your recast timer on weapon skills by 4%, stacking up to 4 times, for the duration of the song. After that, additional procs do nothing. Keep in mind that Army's Payon does not stack with Mage's Ballad, so while you want to use both on cooldown, you should use Mage's Ballad first, and then when it has less than 3 seconds left, you can switch to Army's Payon. In the final 3 seconds of Mage's Ballad, it is not capable of procking anymore, since the final proc happens at the 3 second mark. At this level range, you can also opt to let each song play out completely before changing, since their combined duration is shorter than their cooldowns, and they of course still grant a party-wide bonus. You should continue to use Raging Strikes alongside Mage's Ballad, even if Army's Payon is a little stronger on AoE at this level. This is because Mage's Ballad is superior on single target, so combining it with Raging Strikes and Barrage on boss fights is usually the preferred option. Even on large AoE packs, you should still use Raging Strikes and Mage's Ballad, especially because of the next ability. At level 45, you learn the ability Reign of Death, which is an AoE alternative to Bloodletter in every aspect. They even share cooldown. 
On two or more targets, Reign of Death replaces Bloodletter entirely. At level 50, you learn the ability Battle Voice, which boosts you and everyone in your party's direct hit rate by 20%. As it has the same cooldown as most of your other buffs, it should be used alongside them. As the duration of Battle Voice is slightly shorter than Raging Strikes, you can reasonably delay Battle Voice a couple of weapon skills while they still overlap. Now, to round off, let's cover an actual boss fight opener and rotation. Use Raging Strikes and immediately after use Wind Bite and weave Mage's Ballad and Bloodletter. Then use Venomous Bite, weaving Barrage and Battle Voice. Then Straight Shot, weaving Bloodletter. The reason Raging Strikes is cast BEFORE any weapon skill is to make sure that Windbite also gets to benefit from the buff. This then leads to the general rotation. Use Heavy Shot as a filler when nothing more important is available, and weave Bloodletter whenever it is available. Once Mage's Ballad runs out, weave Army's Payon, and remember to reapply Windbite and Venomous Bite, as they are about to run out. Note that while your songs last just as long as your dots, due to the cooldowns of your songs, your dots are bound to eventually drift away, so make sure to keep track of these two aspects separately. Every two minutes, take note that Mage's Ballad, Battle Voice, Raging Strikes and Barrage will all become ready together, and you should use them all together in sort of the same order as we did in the opener. Reapplying your dots early while Raging Strikes is active does make them hit harder, but this is only really a DPS gain if you do it with dots that have less than 6 seconds left on them, so don't worry too much about this. At higher levels, where more raid buffs are available, this idea does become more viable, however. On two targets, use Quick Knock as your filler and only use Straight Shot alongside Barrage. Wind Bite and Venomous Bite are only worth applying if the enemies last 24 seconds and if that is not the case, just continue using Quick Knock. Use Reign of Death in place of Bloodletter. Aside from that, use your cooldowns as on single target. For three or more targets, apply your dots while the tank is still running up enemies and move on to spamming Quick Knock when you can feasibly hit three enemies at once with it. With six or more targets, you can skip using Barrage entirely. Now, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support me and my channel, you can like the video, leave a comment, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you want to give even more support than that, you can also become a member of the channel. Fun fact, the Warden's Paean used to be a level 58 spell with a 3 second cast time and no cooldown. It also used to both remove a debuff and intercept the next debuff applied. The action was mostly changed to what it is today during Heaven's Ward when it was introduced, but it being a level 35 ability was a change added in Shadowbringers.